Good afternoon. Welcome to another edition of the 411 Talk Zone Radio Show. Red Pill Edition. My name is Leon Jones. And in this segment, I want to talk about minority movements and the Marxist doctrine. So the title of this afternoon's video is Minority Movements are based on the Marxist doctrine. Minority movements are based on the Marxist doctrine. Now, why do I say that? Well, if you look at the voting bloc, particularly with the Democratic Party, most of your minorities vote Democrat. Now, why do they vote Democrat? They vote Democrat because a number of them had movements back in the 60s that were based on race and sexism, or we say gender. And the Democratic Party, they utilize a lot of identity politics. Now, a number of your individuals who are elderly, your baby boomers, are going to vote Democrat. And a number of your millennials and your Zoomers are also going to vote Democrat. Now, according to the demographics that I've seen, most of your women who are single women always vote Democrat. Where your Married women follow their husbands and vote Republican. Now, when it comes to the African-American community, most African-American women will always vote Democrat. Why? Because African-American women follow white feminism. African-American women follow communism. They follow socialism. And if you don't believe me, you had Congresswoman Diane Watson out of California who said she loved Fidel Castro. Then you had Barbara Lee out of California. She was also a fan of Fidel Castro. And you have people like Stacey Abrams. These women are feminists. These women believe in the Marxist doctrine. In fact, a number of us who are African American talk about the Black Panther movement. But what they don't know about the Black Panther movement is that the Black Panther movement was founded on Marxism. Now, why am I saying this? Well, I'm giving you this information because a number of feminists, a number of minorities, whether black or Hispanic, and even white, they believe that in order to fix the problem with equality or having an egalitarian system, they believe that the government should intervene to make everything totally equal. Well, in the real world, nothing is equal. If you really want to talk about equality, then you should talk about equality of opportunities. I can take seven track runners. They're going to run the 100 meter dash. Give them all a start because they all have the same opportunity to win. But odds are they're going to be One, maybe two people come in first place. And rarely do you have two people coming at first place and attract me. But if you look at the feminist movement, you look at the civil rights movement, and even the LGBTQ movement, and you look at a number of your Millennials as well, 
They're all indoctrinated by Marxism. Now, you have a number of people who live in this country following these ideologies, but they've never been outside this country. In fact, people like LeBron James and Beyonce, John Legend, Barbara Streisand, these are the individuals who claim that there's no fairness, but they're the ones who are in the wealthiest 1%. You look at Black Lives Matter and Antifa. Their movement is also based on Marxism. And see, what African Americans have to understand too is their movement of civil rights in the 60s established a lot of other movements like the feminist movement, the LGBTQ movement. And this is why those other groups always talk about civil rights but many of us who are African Americans regardless of where you come from still have this idea that the Democrats are going to do everything for us and what the Democrats do they promise black people everything but they never deliver anything that's because they use that rhetoric to keep all black people on a plantation. And when it comes to conservative women, conservative women, and even minorities who are conservative, they're ridden hard by Democrats. Why? Because the Democrats believe that they should have a monopoly on all minorities. They want all minorities to be sheeple and when you deal with all these movements they talk about equality but they really aren't about equality they're about big government they're about redistribution of wealth they're about special rights but most of us who are informed know that big government doesn't solve any problems and with minorities, particularly African Americans, we have been used as a scapegoat for other minorities, like the Latinos, like the women. Because when we look at affirmative action, who gets more privileges from affirmative action? You have to ask that question. Well, if you say black women, you're wrong. White women. White women get more privileges from affirmative action. A number of us didn't know that because too many of us as African Americans don't read. Many of us are stuck in our feelings. But when it comes to all these movements out here, most of the movements come from the left. And anything that comes from the left is going to be encapsulated and Marxism. You have to believe that. People that encourage Marxism are your white liberals. You have academia. Take a look at Cloward Pivens. Again, I've mentioned Cloward Pivens in a number of my videos. Cloward Pivens, they were two faculty members at Harvard University, and what they prescribed was collapsing of the welfare system to starting something new. You have a number of socialists out here like Bernie Sanders, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Now, I brought those two up because if you look at the generations of the baby boomers, not all of the baby boomers, but enough of them to qualify what I'm saying, and if you look at the millennials, well, they're on opposite sides of the same coin. They believe the way to get to equality is by Marxism. But what they really want are entitlements. You see, what I find 
from the left when it comes to minorities. They keep minorities ignorant. But a number of minorities follow their rhetoric because it sounds good. A number of minorities are looked at as victims. They're looked at as victims because they're very emotional. They don't think. But in the long run, when it comes to movements, any type of movement that comes from the left and its minorities who initiate the movement, best believe that it's a Marxist movement. Now, a number of individuals don't know what Marxism is. Now, at least Black Lives Matter, I believe her name is Patrice Cullors, she said that her movement is a Marxist movement. A number of African Americans need to understand that they are being used. And the funny thing about it is, my frat brothers, I'm a member of Phi Eta Psi fraternity. There are a lot of older brothers in that fraternity. And when I post information on my Facebook page, like I talk about the Democrats, instead of them proving that I'm wrong, they will play the I know you are, but what am I trick? And these are older brothers. And see, a lot of these older brothers have this real delusion that we're still battling civil rights. The problem is we're not battling civil rights. Here's what we're really battling, and I want you all to hear me and hear me clearly. We're battling classism. Racism is an undertone for classism because when we talk about the elites in this country, a number of these elites want to maintain power and they want to maintain power by keeping the country divided because if you look at the minority movements now like Black Lives Matter and Antifa, they have nothing to do with racism. When you hear the word systematic racism, there really is no systematic racism. Now, is there pockets of racism or are there pockets of racism in this country? Again, are they? Are there pockets of racism in this country? Yes, there are. But we don't live in a, a racist society that actually had policies of racism and the laws, like colored people drink at this fountain, whites at this fountain. We are utilizing class. And the people at the top, they're funding people like Black Lives Matter. They're funding the Democratic Party. And what people don't understand about the Democratic Party, the Democratic Party is the party of the KKK. So they're your real racists. But what the Democratic Party does, and they smartly do it, they act as if they care about you. They don't care about you. They just need you to give them the vote every two, every four years to keep them in power. You see, without the minority vote, the Democratic Party essentially dies. Now, as far as the Republicans are concerned, if they're racist in the Republican Party, that's because some of the racists switch from the Democratic Party to the Republican Party. I believe Strom Thurmond, he was a Republican, but I believe he started off as a Democrat. Now, if you look at the landscape now, during this election, Who's causing most of the vitriol out here? It's the people on the left. It's Black Lives Matter. And what's the biggest issue? Race. Now, you also have sexism out here. Now, you don't hear the Gloria Steinems in the world, but there are a number of third and fourth wave feminists who believe if they're criticized, 
the person doing the criticizing, particularly if it's a man, that man is going to be labeled as a misogynist. Now, why do they do that? Because they want to stop the debate. You see, when it comes to minorities in this country, a number of them, they want equality where it benefits them. But at the same time, they want to be victims. And when you deal with the Democratic Party or the left, because it's not everybody in the Democratic Party, but the left believes that this country has a lot of doom and gloom. If you don't believe me, look at the last endorsement speech that Michelle Obama gave on this administration as if everybody is doing poorly in this country. Yes, COVID caused a number of segments to shut down. But segments such as the retail and the tourism industry they make a lot of money, but yet those areas have a lot of high turnover anyway, because to get into retail and in hospitality, you can be an unskilled worker. But when it comes to the minorities, I guarantee some of them have used Solinsky's rules for radical. Some of them believe in Bill Ayers. But what I'm presenting to you is minorities aren't victims, but they play the victim card. And that victim card is given to them from white liberals. So the people who are very dangerous with Marxism are your white liberals. Because a number of your white liberals are in your colleges. They're in your media. And they're promoting Marxism. But the Marxism is disguised as victimhood, racism, sexism, homophobiaism, or someone being homophobic. And see, where the left is smart, the left gets the uninformed voters. Now, I was listening to a video, and shout out to Mr. Fantastic. He did an excellent video last night when he talked about black people and communism and Marxism. I'm one of the YouTubers who mentioned Marxism, communism, and socialism a long time ago. Most African Americans, I can tell you right now, haven't even been outside this country. They don't even know what socialism or communism is. But it's been fed to them that it's a system that's going to help them become equal. First of all, in every society, there is no such thing as true equality, even in a communist nation. Because it's the people at the top with all the money. They make all the rules. And if you look at it in America, the same thing is going on. You have a lot of individuals with the resources who are wealthy. And that includes your tech giants, your media, your corporations. These are the individuals that are making decisions for us. The Obamacare health care bill. Was that written by Congress? No, I believe that was written by somebody in the private sector. You see, in this country, if you have the money, you make the rules here. If you don't have the money, you're going to be subservient. And what the minority movements don't understand is when you believe in Marxism and communism, you might as well go ahead and become a slave because at the end of the day, that's what you are. Because movements of tyranny never put you at the top 
of the food chain. They always keep you at the bottom of the food chain. Why? Because there are a number of tools to control you. Religion. Religion was put in place to control African Americans when they were slaves. And if you think about it now, when it comes to education, when I hear African Americans and I hear women and other minorities have conversations and debates, what do they bring up when they don't have anything to interject into an argument, especially when they're presented with facts? Then they're going to call out sexism. They're going to call out racism. They're going to call out the wealthiest 1%. Well, if you look at the wealthiest 1%, they're basically your athletes, your musicians, your celebrities, and a number of individuals in the media. Now, since I've mentioned those four individuals, what side of the political spectrum do they reside? They reside in the left. So when you talk about the wealthiest 1%, these are the individuals that are putting money into Joe Biden's campaign. And from hearing the debate last week against Mike Pence, if something happens to Joe Biden, if he should win, God help this country. Kamala Harris is not fit to be president. And if you're African American and you believe in Kamala Harris, something is wrong with you. Kamala Harris put a number of African American men in prison for lightweight crimes in California. Do you want somebody like her and Nancy Pelosi? And Governor Cuomo, because he could be part of the Biden administration, those people, you want them to bring New York and San Francisco values for the rest of the country? These are the individuals who want to use Marxist tactics like mail-in voting. And we've already seen mail-in voting not work. They want to expand the court. Joe Biden does not want to answer that question. They want redistribution of wealth. They want the Green Deal. They don't want fracking. They want government to run the health care system. In the end, people like myself are going to be slaves to a tyrannical government. Now, what I'm telling you all, particularly minorities and women, you need to be a little bit more informative about what you say when you're having a debate. Get out of your feelings. Because the people on the left, they want to control this country so we can become part of the one world government. And if you look at a number of these countries out here, they're all run by dictators. They don't care about their people. In fact, a number of them want to decrease their populations. You look at people like Margaret Sanger. You look at abortion in this country. You look at the education system in this country. You look at the media. They're all in it. But these minority movements are not about racism. They're not about sexism. They're not about being homophobic. They're not even about being religious. It's all about classism. See, in America, we don't have a quote unquote class system, but yes, we do under the guise of racism, sexism, homophobicness, and religion. It's the people who have the money who write the rules. It's known as an oligarchy. 
But too many of us don't understand that because these people who have all of the resources know how to divide and conquer the country. That's what the real agenda is. And when we go out to vote, we need to vote for more capitalism instead of communism, socialism, and capitalism. Where in history have you found that socialist countries work? You look at Hugo Chavez from Venezuela. You look at people like Fidel Castro, Pol Pot, Mao St. Tom, Lenin. You look at Karl Marx. A number of these individuals were very good speakers. They made you feel good. But because a number of people were uninformed and uneducated, they didn't know that they were going to be taken for a fool and some even killed. But when it comes to all these minority movements, and the latest one is the BLM and Antifa movement, you must understand that these movements were founded off the doctrine of Marxism. And if you don't believe me, go to BLM's website. They're already telling you they're about feminism, they're about Marxism, they're about the LGBTQ movement, they're about the community raising children. So they're not about men, they're not about the nuclear family. They want to destroy that because on their website, they talk about patriarchy. Well, patriarchy is order. But, again, what I'm simply telling you about all these movements that involve minorities and women, they're about Marxism. And being about Marxism means that you're heavily dependent on a system of government that's going to enslave you. I mean, I hear every debate when it comes to African Americans. They talk about slavery. Well, if you vote for communism, you're going to be back in chains. Remember Joe Biden said, Uh, I think it was Donald Trump when he was running for office the first time. Or it may have been a midterm election. He said the Republicans are going to put y'all back in chains. Well, if you vote for people like Joe Biden, and I believe Joe Biden is a moderate, but see, Joe Biden is a puppet. His strings are being pulled by the communists on the left, like AOC. There's another senator from Hawaii. I forgot her name. You look at the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party is no longer the Democratic Party. These are people who believe in tyranny. They don't like this country, but they benefit off this country. Or they tell you they don't like this country. They like the benefits from this country. But they, they like to keep themselves rich. And they want the rest of us to be poor. Because if you think about it, redistribution of wealth comes from the worker. And when a worker has to go to work and make money, and then you have somebody who's able-bodied not working, well, it keeps us poor because the monies that we make are redistributed to people who don't work. That's not fair. That does not give anyone an incentive to work. And as African-American men, we need to not vote for big government. Because all big government does for African-American men is keep us in jail. Now the black women, they're going to keep voting for big government because they benefited from big government. This is why a number of them believe in a welfare state. They believe in feminism. They believe in education because they benefited from it. And when it comes to poor white men, poor Hispanic men, they haven't benefited either. 
In fact, when it comes to the jail population, there are a number of not only African-American males, but Hispanic males in jail. Now, if you don't believe me, you look at the information for yourself. Because in this election, it's going to come down to this. Do you want freedom? Or do you want tyranny? Because the minute we go to a tyrannical nation, our freedoms are lost forever. And where are we going to end up? We're going to end up back on the plantation as slaves to the government. And that's my commentary for this edition of the 401 Talk Zone radio show right here on YouTube. If you like what I just presented, please comment, share, and subscribe. And if you're looking for some science, technology, engineering, and math, check out the Mind of STEM channel. I talk about industrial engineering subjects, talk about process engineering, information technology, and more. And also, if you want more in-depth content, check out my blog talk radio show. The number to my blog talk radio show, the call in number is 215-383-5785. Now, if you can't find me on YouTube or blog talk radio, you can always check me out on Twitter and Facebook. Now, I want you all to like the videos because my video content is free. Now, I do take donations. You can check the links at the bottom of my YouTube videos where I have my cash app and I have my PayPal. But I want you all to continue to listen to this educational content because we need to be educated because many of us are still stuck on a plantation of ignorance. So I'm going to leave you with this. Be blessed for what you have. Don't worry about what you don't have. Always know that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. And once again, I thank you for listening to this edition of the 411 Talk Zone radio show right here on YouTube. Until next time. My name is Leon Jones. I want you to have a wonderful and gracious day. God bless you.